Hello, today you're going to learn how to make these super awesome hyperspace shots in Blender. Okay, so starting off with a fresh new Blender scene, we're going to delete everything by hitting A, X, and then click delete. We're going to bring in a circle by doing Shift A, Mesh, Circle. Open up this little tab here and type in 64. Hit tab to go into edit mode. One to select vertex mode or just hit this little icon up here. There's Vertex, edge, and face, do vertex. A to select everything. R to rotate. X for the x axis and do 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. Do S to scale and type in 30 to scale it up 30 times larger. It's going to be a very big circle. We're going to want a lot of space in here. Now hit N to open up the N side panel. Go to view and set this to about 10,000. We're gonna want a lot of view distance because this is gonna be a very large tunnel, essentially. Hit N to close that again. Maybe zoom out a little bit so you can get a nice view. And hit E to extrude, Y to lock it on the Y axis, and type in 2,000. So we get a nice two kilometer long tube, essentially, 2,000 meters. Now we're going to do Control R, or if you're on Mac, it's Command R, to do an edge loop. Left click to confirm it, and then slide it over about to here ish, and then do that again. Control R, left click to grab it, put it about here on this side. You want this end to be shorter than this end. Now we're going to select all these vertices at the end here. Hit M at center. To merge all of them into one point. M and at center. Merge it all into one point. Now go into this mode up here, which is X ray mode. Drag select all these points and hit Control and B to add a bevel and move your scroll wheel just a little bit to add a nice, nice little softer rounded edge here. We're going to move to this side and do the exact same thing Control B, bevel. Make this a nice rounded little slope here. Now hit A to select everything. G, Y, and just move it back to about the center. Just so it's nice and centered and not way off to the side. Hit tab to go out of edit mode. Right click, shade smooth, and the modeling is already done for your tunnel. For the sake of keeping things nice and clean, I'm gonna go up to this top right in this area, which is the outliner. Double click the circle name here just rename this to hyperspace tunnel great now that that's done we can move on to the shading portion drag up this timeline here just by selecting this little bar and pulling it up with your mouse select this little clock icon and switch this to shader editor click new name this hyperspace for making everything simpler we're just going to break everything up into its individual components and combine them all at the end so for starters, we're going to select this principal BSDF node and just delete it. We don't need it. We're going to do Shift A, type in Texture Coordinate. Pull this off to the side, probably way off to the side here. And do Shift A to grab or to search a gradient texture. Plug these two in. Plug the generated into the vector coordinates. Next, we're going to grab a math node and duplicate this over here too with Shift D. So we're going to set this first one to multiply, set it to 2.5. We're going to plug the color into this top value here and plug this multiply down into this add here. And then we're going to, in this add node, we're going to select this, type in hash frame divided by 7. So for every frame, Every number of each frame is going to divide that by 7, and that's going to be this value here. Next, let's grab a combine XYZ, plug the value into the X, and grab an A mapping node. Put this about here, put this vector into the rotation, and out from this generated texture coordinate once again, we're going to drag this out, type in vector math subtract, Pull that here. We're going to subtract every value by 0.5. We're going to take the vector here and plug this into the vector here. And then on this x coordinate, we're going to do a similar setup. 
to how we did this add node. I'm going to do hashtag frame divided by 30. And now we can select all of these, do control J, and then rename this to swirl coordinates. And then I will pull this up on the screen here so you can get a good view. Okay, now I'm just gonna pull this whole thing over here. You can just select the frame here and just move it and they will all move together. I'm gonna do shift A, bring in a noise texture, set the scale to about 3.4, detail to 3 and roughness to 5 sorry 0.535 and then distortion just add a little bit set it to like 0.1 I'm gonna do shift A grab in a color ramp plug the factor into the color ramp on this little drop down here set this to B spline pull the black stop up here and then add in three more stops set them you want to kind of space them in a way that mimics this pattern here and then in this second from the left we're going to add a kind of a dark blue color the next one over is going to be a slightly lighter blue color this one i'm going to pull this up and add in a fairly desaturated blue color almost white and i will pull these colors up on screen if you want to copy mine exactly and to finish off this section, we're going to do Shift A, add in a brightness contrast node, set the contrast to just something subtle like 0.01, plug the color into the color here. And then again, we can grab all these, Control J, just to keep it all organized and name this pattern. Okay, now for the final node cluster, we're going to do Shift A, gradient texture, drag this generated coordinate, plug it into the vector here. Grab in a math node, set it to power. Make sure you have this on clamp and set this exponent to 2.25. Plug your color into the base. Then we're gonna do shift A, grab in a color ramp. Plug the value into the factor, move the black up about to halfway and move the white down slightly. I'm going to do shift A, grab it in another math node, but instead of power, set this one to multiply, do the color into the first socket, and do this noise texture factor into the bottom socket. Oh, come on. Grab in a shift A, grab another color ramp. Set this one to B spline, plug the value into the factor. Drag this one up to about a third of the way. Hit the plus to add in another color stop. Set this to full black. Move this over just a little bit and then drag down the white once again. And then grab one more math node. Plug the color into the top value. Set this to multiply and multiply it by something big like 2000. We're gonna make this super bright. And then you can again select everything Control J and rename this to jump end. And now we can hook it all together. So we're going to take this vector, plug this into the vector here. Maybe move these around a little bit, keep it a little bit organized. We're going to do Shift A, add shader, Shift A, emission, and then duplicate this emission once again. I'm going to plug the two emissions into the add shader, put the output. Of the add shader into the material output here plug this color into the color here plug this value into the strength here okay so now once you have all your nodes hooked together let's actually talk about what everything is and how it all works so if you click this you can view the material and if you're having this issue where it's sideways make sure you have your hyperspace tunnel selected hit tab to go into edit mode A to select everything R to rotate Z to lock it on the Z axis and type in negative 90. That'll rotate the entire thing 90 degrees. And this is pretty much what it should look like. And there's some issues here and there, but we will fix them as we go. Okay, so to start from the beginning of all the nodes, you have a gradient texture that goes from zero on this end to one here. You can think of this as 0%, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%, 14%, 15%, 16%, 17%, 18%, 19%
to 100%. And this all just gets filtered through into the rotation. So think of it rotating, 0% rotation here, 100% here. If you have more rotation on one end than the other, it'll create a twirling effect. If you look at the actual coordinates here, you'll see a twirling effect. Oh, and if you're having this issue where it's off to the side for whatever reason, you can do right click, set origin to geometry, and then you can do shift S selection to cursor, and that'll recenter everything. But anyways, so this has your twisted coordinates that twist along the length of here. This add node just moves the coordinates back and forth and this node here moves the entire system back and forth. And you'll see that here when you view your noise texture which is all distorted and twisted throughout. And if you were to hit play you can see it spinning and twisting. And then through this black and white map you pick your colors through here. And this already looks a lot like the hyperspace effect but there's not the white light at the end. And then this brightness contrast just adds a touch of contrast. But, so for the white at the end, it's another gradient from one end to the other. Do a power node to just kind of crunch it, crunch the contrast a little bit more. And then so does this color amp, it crunches it a little bit more. Multiplying it by this noise, since it's just noise, adds a little bit more variation to it. So it's not just a white circle. This color amp crunches it even further so you get fine detail. And then this multiply brightens it so it's super, super hot white. And then at the end of all of this, add the shaders, and boom, you have this hyperspace effect. And this is already a great start as is, but we can even take it a step further. So I like to go into this render properties, scroll down until you see color management. I like to have mine on filmic for these kinds of shots, and set the look here to medium, sorry, to medium high contrast, and that just adds a little bit of punch. If you want, you can make the tunnel like a little bit brighter. Maybe tone this down to like 600 so it's not super overkill. And then you can bring in a model of anything you'd like. For now, I'm just going to do the classic Blender Suzanne Monkey, just for simplicity's sake. Have it face towards the end of the tunnel here. And here you have it with reactive lighting swirling around. Let me, let me give this a bit more of an interesting shader. Oh, that looks really cool. And if you're sitting here thinking, mm, man, I wish the light on here hitting it was brighter, but I don't want to come in here and change the brightness because then it looks all washed out. Well, here's a cool little trick. You can do Shift A, grab a light path node. Shift A, grab in a mix node. Set your bottom, uh, set your B output to, sorry, your B input to like about the current brightness that you have it to look and then the top to be the brightness that you want the emissive level to be. And then take your is camera ray, which basically says, is this what I'm looking at versus how light is interacting with it? Plug the result into the strength, and now you have total control over the lighting here. If you want this to be brighter or darker without changing the actual tunnel visually, you just adjust these values and play with them how you'd like and it still animates the same, it still all works the same. Now if you want to throw in a spaceship in here and make it look really cool, I'm using this N1 Starfighter, you can find it down in the description. Now we can animate it and make it look like it's flying through the hyperspace. So to start, let's just go back into the viewport shading, just the viewport mode so it's easier to work with here. Make sure you have your overlays on so you can see what you're doing. I recommend selecting your control object or whatever your ship may be. In this case, it's just this empty here. Go to your start frame, go to this object, and rotate along your rotation axis here. I'm just going to set this to maybe negative 20, about. Select this to add a keyframe. Go to maybe frame 120 or wherever you want your end to be. You can just set your end here. For mine, I'm just going to do 120 and put this to the positive of whatever that number is. So just about, you know, it doesn't have to be precise, about there. 
select both of these keyframes here in the timeline, hit T, set this to linear, and the interpolation between the two will be linear. So now you have this nice subtle rotation. Then we're going to do Shift A, go down to camera, G, Y to bring it out. Over here in this little tab here, this your constraints tab, we're going to do add constraint, track to, and set it to your spaceship object. Now we're going to animate the camera. So hit G, X, and move it probably maybe to here. And then you can hit this camera icon to view what your camera is actually looking at. Hit I, location, or you can do the same thing here. Hit these tiles here to go to keyframe. Or you can do the same thing here and hit these little pips to keyframe. Go to the end of your animation and move it down the opposite direction. Set another keyframe. And then to make sure you don't see this hole at the end here in your camera settings, set this to the same how we did our viewport settings, set it to about 10,000. And now if you hit play, you get its cool animation of the camera whipping by. And then if you want to view it in the viewport without all this extra stuff that's outside of the camera in your camera tab, go to viewport display, enable this pass part out. I don't know. Nobody knows how to say that and crank this up to one. I disable your overlays and hit play. Now you have this super cool hyperspace animation.